I was reading a Gottman study the other day on marital stability. Gottman has done some really good analysis of couples' behavior. He has set up a lab that's basically a bed and breakfast, and he brings couples in there for a weekend, and he wires them up physiologically, and monitors their reactivity. And so what he's, he can predict whether a couple's going to divorce with 94% accuracy. It's like impressive. So what has he found? He's found two categories of, he's, he's identified two phenomena that are very much worth knowing. The first is that the, the couples who are going to get divorced, they come into the bed and breakfast, and they speak with each other quite calmly. But it's more walking on eggs calm. And while they're speaking with each other calmly, their physiology is like, they're very aroused. And so, so they're sort of aroused like someone who's facing a predator. So you might think of an unhappy couple as predator and prey to each other. And so the words are there mostly to stop predatory activity, not to actually communicate anything. It's just to keep the surface calm. So then you might think, well, what's under the surface? And what's under the surface, so Freud would say, it's what's under the surface is unconscious. And, but you can say, well, what's under the surface is one of these hierarchies that's all banged up and twisted and, and, and not in reasonable shape. And so people don't want to open the door to that. So, but they do. This is a Freudian slip. So let's say this is, goes to the second part of Gottman's observations. So... The, the woman goes over to the window, and she says, Oh, look, there's a cardinal outside. You know, a cardinal is that bright red bird, they're kind of cool looking. You know, it's kind of a trivial thing in some sense, but by the same token, it's like, it's a little positive thing, and, you know, 20 of them in a day is a good thing. Okay, so then the, uh, the partner, the husband in this example, has a two-by-two two matrix of choices. One is... Who the hell cares about your stupid bird? Okay, so that's one. The second one is, <sighs> then you go over and look at the bird, right? And the, the third one is, you don't make the contempt noise, but you act it out. And the fourth one is, um, you go over there like a civilized human being, and, you know, and that you're interacting with someone that you care for, and you take a look at the damn bird, and you're happy about it. And, it, and that's as truthful and real as you can manage. Okay, so, the <sighs> option, that's a Freudian slip, right? Because what it says, there's a whole monster underneath that, and the monster is all the disorganization in this entire structure. It's like the, <sighs> might be, we have been tormenting each other about various things for the last ten years, and none of them are resolved, and I'm not very happy about you for so many reasons, I can't even remember all of them. And I'm, I can't enumerate them right now because that would take forever and maybe we would have a huge fight. But by the same token, I'm not going to come over there and make you happy with your stupid bird. And I'm going to indicate that subtly so you can't call me a son of a bitch because I'm just sighing and that's what I'll say if you do ask me. But I'm going to load all that up and I'm going to deliver it to you. And what's going to happen to you is because you're smart is your heart rate's going to go way up like you're being attacked. And the reason for that is you are. So what the good couples do, the couples that, you know, stay together, is they respond to each other's bids. He calls them bids. And so if one person wants to share some little trivial daily positive thing with the other, the other, you know, isn't carrying around a bloody cartload of resentment and is able to respond to that in a positive way. And that way, the general interactions between the couples stay positive. But that's also because they've worked this out. Now, you know it's got to be because they work it out, because the couples who are physiologically reactive to each other, they're communicating, but there's all sorts of horror underneath the surface. And we're trying to figure out, well, what is it that's underneath the surface? What's the structure of the unconscious? Well... That's the structure of the unconscious, and it's either well-structured and functional and mutually agreed upon and as explicit as possible, or it's this constantly. 